Kobolds are known far and wide for their resourcefulness. What they lack in social tact or cultural refinement, they make up for in the sheer ambition of their contraptions, plans, and schemes. One such example of pure kobold ingenuity is the Kobold Cannon. Using a clever compound slingshot mechanism, the Kobold Cannon is capable of launching any small creature up to 200 feet in a chosen direction. It's also capable of launching certain items up to 400 feet. First employed at the Battle of Lord Martin's Garrison, the cannon was used to propel troops over enemy watch and the walls of the fort. Of course, not being very safety oriented, most of the Kobolds were knocked unconscious upon entry. This fact led to the development of the widely feared Second Morgunder Kobold Cannon under the leadership of Kobold artificer Kazmat Kibblefrick. The main design difference between this cannon and the previous was the implementation of a conveyor-fed, parachute-equipped roll cage that allowed for obviously safer entry. The heavier weight also meant that they needed to add more power to the launch, leading to them using explosive charges that set off in time with the standard launch bands. Needless to say, this resulted in them just launching bloody chunks out of the front of the cannon for the first few tries, only realizing the flaw after needlessly erupting 12 would-be paratroopers. Upon this realization, they forfeit the Battle of Black Lake and returned home, where Kazmak began plans for a proposed THIRD GOODEST COBAL CANNON FOR REAL THIS TIME! The explosives agent was removed and was instead replaced with more sling string and a bracing method that mimicked a four-band crossbow. The cannon was complete. The kobolds of Kaidak deployed after a month of development with a great new target in their sights, a small town on the border of two northern regions. They assembled the cannon in cover of night, hiding it behind a grassy hill before beginning their assault. The townspeople awoke in a panic, the sound of wicker bursting in the streets, followed by cackling and high-pitched screeches of victory. The kobolds had successfully begun invading the town, and with the guard caught by surprise, they were able to somehow take the central stronghold in a matter of minutes. With the townspeople fleeing into the hillside around them, the kobolds quickly moved in, completing the ambush tunnels they'd dug prior and allowing their entire force into the town. By morning, their banners hung from the buildings of Altheron, now known as New Kazdak. The townspeople, amused with the tenacity of the kobolds and relieved that there was barely any property damage in the invasion, let them have the town for a bit. They lived on the outskirts of town in tents and wagons, pretending to cower in fear every time a kobold platoon would pass through. They'll probably take their town back in a week or two, but with the installation of the fourth cannon atop the old guard tower, that may prove more difficult than anticipated. The Kobold Cannon is a pretty simple encounter that I like quite a bit. It consists of a space large enough to take several rounds of full movement across various traps and hindrances scattered around said space and a large kobold built man cannon at the far end. Your players approach from one end with the goal of getting to whatever's on the other side. Of course, that side is blocked by this massive contraption. Every other round, this contraption launches 1d4 kobolds out onto the field to fight the players. These kobolds can come in various different types, from your normal spear wielders to archers, and in some rare cases, mages or inventors. Some might even just KO on impact, dealing 4d6 bludgeoning damage to a player who fails a save. You can go even crazier with what the cannon launches. Maybe it launches perforated spheres of flammable oil that track a line across the field along their flight path which is then later lit ablaze. Maybe they launch a sphere full of angry bats, which seek out the nearest player and attempt to drain them of their blood or lift them up to drop. Get wild with it. Once the players get close enough, the archers begin to attack them in a final effort to keep them from the cannon. The machine itself has 55 hit points and an AC of 17. To keep things interesting for the players while they wail on the thing, consider having an engineer spin it around in an effort to shake them off. Players who are within 10 feet of it must succeed a dexterity save or be thrown 30 feet away. Players who fail also have a chance to get stuck on the contraption and flung around as the engineer panics. D&D is full of opportunities for unfortunate accidents like this, and the kobold cannon seeks to accentuate those moments. Let me know your thoughts. How would you spice up the Kobold Cannon, and where would you use it in-game? That's all for me, but I'd like to take a moment to thank my patrons for funding this channel. You guys are the best! If you haven't pledged, consider it. It's only two bucks a month, and you get a whole bunch of goodies. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Uh, hey guys, to who stayed till the end of this video, uh, my tablet broke recently, I mean not recently, like a week ago, um, and I had to shell out a bunch of money to get a new one, but I got the new one, so I was able to get back to work on this video, sorry for the big drop off in, you know, production time, it's been almost a month, um, 
But anyway, uh, that it did cost a lot of money to replace it. So that means I'm going to be taking commissions in between video releases. Check out my Twitter for the commissions sheet. It will be going up soon and see if those interest you in any way because all that money helps me fill up this massive hole in my bank account. And that's pretty much it.